Amen, amen. Thank you for that. Thank you, Emma. Hey, it's so good to be here. And uh, like Emma said, I'm really excited about next week when you guys are also going to be here with us. Um, but yeah, I hope that you had a Merry Christmas. I hope that you had a Happy New Year. I hope that you're feeling good about the beginning of your year. And as I was praying for South Point Church and praying for where we wanted to go this year and how we wanted to kick off the year, I, I came across a message that I wanted to do last year and wasn't able to do it. But th this is a really important message to me. This is something that means a lot to me. This thing that we're going to be talking about, these words to live by that we're going to be speaking on for the next two Sundays, this is a message that saved my life at one of my low points. This is something that I think is going to save your life. This is something that I think will change your life, that will shape the way that you think about yourself. It'll shape the way that you think about others. It'll shape the way that you interpret the way that people are thinking about and talking about you. There's not one more, there's not anything that could be more influential about the way that you think or about what shapes you than the way that you think. That, that's the absolute most influential thing that there is, the way that you think, the way you think about yourself, the way you think about others. And so much of us, we carry around a bit of a toxic mindset. We, we carry different thoughts, you know, maybe that don't, yeah, they're just not healthy, they just, don't, they just don't align with setting us up in a good place. And so I thought, there's no better way to start this year than to go ahead from the beginning and set it out right, set it up straight, and say that we are going to align our thoughts. We're going to get ourselves in a healthy place. We're going to get ourselves in a place where we are just absolutely moving in a positive direction. And I believe it's going to set our trajectory for the entire year. So what we're going to talk about today is going to set you up in your life for a better year. Now, speaking of a better year, January is always one of those times where um, if you're a member in a gym, you actually probably don't like January because the gym goes from you can go up and get your own equipment and there's plenty of room to work out and there's plenty of room to move around. And now all of a sudden in January, the gym is packed. The gym is, is completely full, and, and that's because of this, this idea of that it's a new year. And, and we walk around with this mentality that's like, new year, new you. New year, new me. It's like, it's, it's easy for January to come and say, you know what, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it over. I'm going to have a better year this year. It's going to be a new version of me this year. I'm going to quit that that bad habit. I'm going to quit smoking. I'm not going to eat any donuts. I'm going to go to the gym every day. I'm going to drink 10 liters of water every single day. But it's new year, new you, new year, new me. And, and I don't know if there's just magic in January 1st or if there's, if, if there's magic around, you know, kind of this, this idea of, okay, we're going to set goals and these goals are going to be so big and so massive, and it's going to redefine who I am, and it's going to reshape who I am. And we start off in January with so much momentum. January 1st, we wake up, and well, most of us are recovering from the night before. But once we get recovered from the night before, we, we're like, okay, I'm moving, man. January 2022 is going to be my year. This is going to be my year. And we get all excited about it, but something happens. See, life does this thing where it, it hits us about February. Or some of us, it hits us even earlier. Some of us, it, it hits us in March. Some of us, it hits us on like January 5th or January 6th or maybe even January 2nd today. But the, there's this truth that, see, life is incredibly hard. Life's incredibly, incredibly hard. Your whole year last year was a hard year. That, that's, every year is a hard year. Every year is a year that we think to ourselves, and we're like, man, this year is hard, especially with, with dealing with COVID and with all the different variants and, and the things that are happening business-wise and, and all those different things. We, we just, it's like, man, last year was such a hard year. Last year was so difficult on me. But Here's the truth, is that life is hard, but it's not actually going to get any easier. Because you know what? There's bills that always need to be paid. People are always going to get sick. 
the family is always going to be arguing or griping. You're always going to have to go back to work on Monday. Or if you don't have a job, it, it's, it's that reality that, hey, next week I'm, I'm still without a job. I'm still trying to find a job. It's nothing magic happens on Monday mornings or on January 1st or January 2nd. Nothing magic happens that all of a sudden makes life easier. Life is just hard. And it's going to continue to be hard. It's not going to get any easier. So some of us, we're waiting on life to get easier. We're waiting on life to ease up. We're waiting on life to just let go of us. We're, wait, we're, we're just waiting and waiting and waiting. And I, I've got, you know, an unfortunate truth to tell you is that life, if you're waiting on life, you're going to be waiting for a very, very, very long time. Because this is just true. Life just isn't going to get any easier. My dad growing up used to, I, he, he had this saying with me. I would ask him a question and I would say, you know, hey dad, can I go and can I do this or do that? And he would say, no. And I'd be like, man, life's not fair. And he would say, well, do you want to know a truth about life? And I'd be like, yeah. And he'd be like, life's not fair. <laughs> it just isn't. You know, or, or I would say, Dad, why, why is this happening in my life? Why, do I, why did I not make the team? Or why am I getting bullied? Or why am I dealing with this or that? And he would just look at me and be like, well, you know what, son? Life's just not fair. That's just the way that it is. And that's true. And, and for those of you that are sitting here thinking about this, and what I'm trying to do as I talk about this, is I'm trying to shock you into the reality that Somewhere deep inside of you, you're hoping that this year is easier. You're hoping that this year is better. You're hoping that Monday morning next week, or, or when the builder's holiday is over and done, you're hoping that that day is a better day, an easier day. But you know what? Life just isn't fair, and it's not going to be easier. And I can promise you that on your worst day, there's somebody else out there whose best day is still worse than your worst day. Now, that's just a matter of perspective. That, that is a perspective shift. That's a perspective change. And that, that's hard. Now, I'm not asking you to have that perspective. But what I'm trying to drive home is this point here, is that life doesn't necessarily get any easier. Now, what I want to talk about today is something that plays into this whole life thing, that plays into this difficulty of life. What I want to talk about today and even next week is something that, that I feel so strongly about because I've lived it and I've walked through it. And it's something that I have to relive and I have to re-walk through almost every single year. Even multiple times during the year, I'll have to walk through this. But before we walk through it, before I teach you guys something that you can do to set yourself up for a better year this year, there's, there's a truth that I need you to grasp. There's, there's a truth that, that I need you to understand. And it has to do with the way that you think and the way that you think about yourself. And that truth is that your thoughts matter more than you can ever imagine. Your thoughts matter more than you can ever imagine. The things that you think about yourself have more of an impact on you than you could ever imagine. The things that you think about your family or about your neighbors or about your coworkers, the things that you think about your home and about your life and your existence, the things you think about how hard your life is, has more impact on you than you could ever imagine. See, life will always move in the direction of your strongest thoughts. That is a hard truth. That is a big truth. Your life will always move in the direction of your strongest thoughts. What are your strongest thoughts? What are the things that are so strong in your mind? The ways that you think, the ways you think about yourself, the ways that you think about others, the ways that you think about Monday morning. What, what's your strongest thought on January 1st or January 2nd? What's your strongest thought on, on December 15th, when everyone last year, 2021, was going away on holiday. What are those strong thoughts? What's your strongest thought when you encounter your spouse that you're upset with? Or when you encounter your family that's mad at you? Or when you encounter that coworker or that difficult neighbor? Or whatever it is, what are your strongest thoughts? Because 
This is a truth that we're going to go back to today. We're going to go back to it next week. And we're going to keep going back to this. Is that life will always move in the direction of your strongest thoughts. There is so much influence that your thinking has on the way that your life moves. There's so much influence that your thinking about yourself has just on the way that you carry yourself. So we, we all have this thing called the, an inner dialogue. So I, I like to make a joke about my inner dialogue. See, me and my inner dialogue, we're really good friends. We're, we're like, we're best friends. And your inner dialogue, this is that thing that you do. I don't know if you've ever been in this situation where, so I'll tell you, I've never lost an argument in the shower. As I'm thinking about uh, something that's happened during the day, you know, somebody that upset me or something that upset me or somebody that I saw do something that I didn't agree with, you know, you may argue with them in person or, or they may just tell you, like, your boss may come up to you and be like, you know, hey, I want this done this way and I don't care and they, they treat you poorly and you get home and you're like, you know, mad washing your hair and you're in the shower and you're like, well, I would t- I'll tell you and, you know, I would have said this and I'll say that and, well, you can't, you know, stand up for, I mean, and you have this inner dialogue and, and it's great because you can always win in an argument when it's just you and your inner dialogue. But your inner dialogue, it goes on to play more roles in your life. Your inner dialogue plays this role of, of, of this is what's telling you who you are. Your inner dialogue is what's feeding maybe guilt or shame. It's what's feeding fear. Your inner dialogue is talking. It's, it's in your ear. It's in your head. When you're walking into situations... When you're walking into buildings or office parks, when you're walking into your home or into a friend's home, when you get alone at night and it gets dark and it gets quiet and you lay down in bed and for the first time in the day, it's just you and a silent room. It's that inner dialogue that starts to come. It starts to talk. It starts to tell you who you are. It starts to tell you what you are. It starts to bring up your day and say, hey, remember when you said that today? Hey, remember when you, when you did that today? Yeah, that wasn't smart. That wasn't good. It's like there, there, there's jokes. There's a, a joke that I've seen on the internet in a meme, and it's, it's great. And it's a picture of someone laying down in bed at night and kind of a thought bubble that pops up. And inside the thought bubble, it, it says, it says, my, my inner thought, and then below it, it says, hey, remember that thing you did seven years ago to that girl that no longer lives in your state anymore, or, or for your context in your province anymore? And it's, the, the joke behind it is, is that our mind is so powerful, and our inner dialogue is so powerful, that it will often even just search for and pull up old memories. It'll pull up insecurities. It'll pull up things from the past. And the joke to that is, and, and I understand it because I live it, and I know so, some of you live it, is that your inner dialogue kind of never leaves you alone. It always is kind of on this cycle of repeating and repeating and reminding you and reminding you and reminding you of what you said or what you did, reminding you of things you're not happy about, reminding you of things maybe that you feel guilty or you feel shameful about. See, do you see what's happening? Do you see the battle between, between your thoughts and between your life and how you live, how you carry yourself, the freedom that you walk in, the freedom that you live with. Now, based on all this, I, I've got a challenging question. I'm going to give you a statement, and then I'm going to ask you a question. And so the statement that I'm going to give you is, is this. We're going to go back to it. Your life is moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. Now, I, I, I hope that you've seen that. I hope I've been able to paint that picture for you. I hope I've been able to just help you see that, you know what? This may be something that you don't see or know about that's going on in your life, but it is. It's happening every day. Your life is moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. Now, the question that I ask is, are you excited about the direction that your thoughts are taking you? If life is moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts, what are those strongest thoughts? And what direction is that taking you in? And are you excited about where you're going? Does it make you happy to think about where you're going? You know, I, I, 
I've been talking about, you know, lots of hard thoughts in this hard inner dialogue. It works the other way. See, our, our minds are renewable. The Bible tells us that, that our minds are renewable. The Bible tells us that, that our, our thoughts and, and everything that we, that we think about, about ourselves and about life is renewable. It tells us that, that we can rewrite the way that we think. Now, this is something that's scientifically proven. This is something that's measurable. It's something that, that it, it's, it's not sort of frou-frou science, but it's real science. We have what's called a, a neuroplasticity. And in, what that means is that you're able to actually change the makeup and the chemistry of your mind. You're actually able to change the physical landscape of your mind. And see, that, that works to our advantage because we can change our inner dialogue. We can change the way we think about ourselves, and it can actually change the way our brain looks it can change the way that our brain kind of thinks, the way that our brain feels. It can change everything about us. And now the, the negative side to that is if we continue thinking bad thoughts. Karina, go back to that previous slide. If we continue thinking, if we continue to let our strongest thoughts be negative thoughts, it is 100% going to take you to a destination that maybe you don't want to go to. And so what I hope to do with this message today and what I hope to do with the message next week is kind of snap us out of it, kind of help us to wake up, help us to realize, like, oh, wait a minute. If my life is moving in the direction of my strongest thoughts, what are my strongest thoughts? And am I happy to be moving in that direction? Now, some of you have been working really, really, really hard to reshape yourself. Some of you have already spent the whole last year, the whole last month, just telling yourself, you know what, I am good, I am beautiful, I am wonderful, I'm a good dad, I'm a good husband. You've been working on this. And, and as you tell yourself that, it begins to change the way that you think about yourself, the way that you, the way that you feel about yourself. See, this, this stuff works. This stuff's important. It's so important. It's so important that this will change your life. It will set you on a trajectory that, that can position you in a place of, of hurt or pain. It can position you in a place of being a victim. Are, are you a person that always ends up being the victim in every situation? Are you the person that always ends up being the hurt one? Are you the person that always ends up being on the receiving end of someone else's bad attitude or someone else's hurt? You know, that's a pathway. That's a thought pathway that you can actually change. You know, I'll tell you one more interesting thing before I move on. But th this is something that, that I've learned personally through going through therapy and being a part of therapy. Through dealing with anxiety, through dealing with depression, dealing with panic attacks. If any of my friends out there online ever have, you know, deal with panic attacks, I know there's tons of you out there that do. And unfortunately, I know there's tons of you out there that do it in secret and that do it in shame. And I'm so sorry for you that you do that in secret and in shame because you don't have to. But what ends up happening is you have a panic attack or you get consumed with anxiety or you wake up in the morning, you feel down, you feel depressed and you don't do anything about that. And you just let that thought continue to build and build and build and fester and fester and fester. And then you find yourself being taken in a direction of every day being consumed with panic or every day being consumed with depression or anxiety. And I just want to say to you, you've got to stop the cycle. You've got to break that cycle. And that's what this message is about. And I'm actually going to equip you and give you something that you can do to completely stop the cycles of thinking that you've been in. And so now what I want to do, I've got three statements for you. And these three, these are just three truths for you to absorb. It's maybe not going to change your life, but these are things for you just to absorb and for you to know. So... The first one is this. We need God to change our thinking. It's not up to us. Now, for those of us that are Jesus followers, you know, we believe that God is our heavenly father. As we sang about it today, God is a good, good father. Jesus is someone that died on the cross and, and he rose, he resurrected, and, and he gave us this eternal gift of grace and love and mercy. He gave us what we don't deserve. 
And the nice thing is for us is we can rest in this comfort of knowing that it's not up to me to change my thinking. That's actually something that God does. What it's up to me to do is just give God my thinking. I just give it to Him. Just surrender it. Turn it over. Now, what does that look like? It's extremely practical. It, it looks like in the morning getting up and giving God the first minute of your day. I, I'm not going to say the first hour or the first 10 minutes or the first 30 minutes or having an incredible quiet time, as, as we call it, or an incredible time in a devotional moment of prayer with God. No, just give Him your first minute. What's the first thought that comes to your mind when you wake up in the morning? And just let God have that. And then over time, we're going to let God change our thinking. Now, for those of you that, that maybe you're not a Jesus follower, you're not a Christian, you know, you're new, or someone has just sent this to you, you know what, this applies to you as well. This is so relevant to you. Whether you're a Buddhist or whether you're, you're just into the mindfulness movement, you know why this stuff works? You know why it works to settle down and be present in your moment and then to think about things, think about positive things, change the way that you think, take a negative thought and change it into a positive thought? I mean, this works. It works so well because God designed our minds. He gave us a gift in our mind to rewrite the way that we think, to rewrite the way that we feel. And it can be as easy as starting with just the first minute of your morning. Now, the next thing I want you to know is this. Life isn't about what happens to you, but rather how you think about what happens to you. See, this goes back to that thing I was talking about in the beginning, that life doesn't actually get any easier. See, li life is not necessarily going to change. The same things are going to keep happening to you. The same, you know, the same day is going to happen. The same schedule is going to happen. Lot, things are always going to happen. You know, you come out of one bad season. Or you come out, I'm not even going to call it a bad season. You come out of one season of life. And you're like, oh man, I'm so glad that season's over. And then immediately a new season comes in. And I, I say this to again make the point. I don't want you to just wait on life to get easy. Because it, it, it never will. Life is hard. That's, it's just not fair. But once we understand this truth here, is that we may not be able to determine what happens in our life, but you know what we can determine? We can determine how we think about the things that happen in our life. You know, I can't determine someone else's actions or behavior and how what they do to me or what they do around me or what they say about me. But you know what I can have control over? I can have control over how much brain space I give that. I can have control over how I think about that. I don't have to give it, I don't have to give it brain space. I don't have to assign value or meaning to it. I, I don't, I'm in control of how I think. I'm in control of how I interpret. I can take control of that. It's, I'm not a victim to the world. We're not a victim to our seasons in life because life will always just continue to give us new seasons. Now, the next truth that I have for you is about stress. None of us feel stress, right? Everyone is completely stress-free. I know that's not true. Stress is not about how much you have to do, but rather how you think about what you have to do. So once again, the stress is that how much you have to do is not going to change. Once you finish one project, you go on to the next project, and then you go on to the next project, and then the next project. Or once you finish, you know, solve, you, you fix the refrigerator, you repair the tires, you know, you, you, you take care of the dog, you, you know, you fix your garage door, whatever it is that's broken, as soon as you get it fixed, something else breaks. You know, you, you have a busy season of meetings. You're going to have another busy season of meetings. You're going to have quotas that you have to hit at work. Things are going to happen. You're going to have new quotas that you have to hit at work. Stre the, the things in life that cause stress, the busyness, the stuff that we have to do, it, it's not going to go away. It's not going to change. But again, you are in control of how you think about what you have to do. You're in control of how you Think about things that cause you stress. Now, there's something... Okay, so let me say it this way. If we're in control of how we think about life, if we're in control of how we think about stress, 
If we're, if we're in control of what goes on up here in our noodle, little noodle brain, if we're in control of that, then why don't we just create a, a, a mental utopia that's full of nothing but love and warmth and good thoughts and, and full of nothing but, you know, Chris, you're amazing. You're the man. You know, you're, you're, you can do anything. Today is your day. You're going to wake up in the morning, seize the day. Why, why is that not our life? If we're in so much control over that, why don't we have that life? Why don't we just say, you know what, this is who I am. This is what I want to be. And now I'm just going to go and I'm going to be that. And I'm going to make myself think that. What's in the way of that? It's this thing called strongholds. See, a stronghold is, is that thing that keeps you from, from going to where you want to go. So let, let me tell you what, what a stronghold is. A stronghold is a fortified place. Karina, you can go back. Karina's jumping ahead. She's on the, on the gun up there with us. A stronghold is a place that, that it's a fortified place. A fortified place is a place maybe where you feel safety, where you feel secure. It's a place that's hard to break into. Now, okay, so if a stronghold is a place of safety... Why is a stronghold a bad thing? Well, I would ask the question to you. I would say, you know, why do we turn to bad behaviors? Because they make us feel comfortable. It's like, you know, if you know that drinking is bad for you, then when you get stressed out, why do you turn towards alcoholism? Well, that's a stronghold in your life. It, it may be bad, and you know that it's bad, but you go there. Over and over and over and over again. Why? Because there's something inside you that knows it. You know it and you're familiar with it. And because you're familiar with it, it brings some sense of safety. It brings some sense of, of knowing or normality to you. That's a stronghold. That's a, that's a bad stronghold. And I'm not just talking about people drinking. It, it could be anything. It could be the way that you think about yourself. It could be the, the way that you see yourself. But whatever it is, a stronghold is something that we get deceived into believing that we're stuck in. It's something that, that we're deceived into believing that, that we can't escape from. It, it's, like a, it's like a mental prison. Now, Jesus, he wants to be our stronghold. And when Jesus says in the Bible that he wants to be our stronghold, what he means is he wants, he wants this is what he wants. Okay, your stronghold what, what is it that you think about? What's the first thought that you have when life gets bad or life gets hard or someone makes fun of you or someone pokes at you or someone has something to say about you? What's the first thing that comes to mind? Oh, I need a drink. Oh, I need a meal. Oh, I need to stop at a gas. I need a candy bar. Oh, I, I, you know what? I'm a victim. Or, oh, it's my mom's fault. Or, oh, it's the way that I was raised. That first thing that you think about, that's probably your stronghold. That's probably something in you that is a stronghold. And so I would ask you this question that now Karina can put on the screen is, what are your strongholds? What are those things that are strongholds in your life? Think about the things that you go to, the things that prevent you from thinking about yourself in the way that, that you know you should think about yourself? What are the things that keep you from believing in yourself? What are the things that keep you from conquering Mondays? What are the things that keep you from, from thinking positive thoughts about yourself? What are, what are those things? Those are your strongholds. Now, Jesus wants to be your stronghold. He wants to be the first thing you turn to. He wants to be your safe place. He wants to be that, that fortified fortress where you're not deceived into being, but you're led by truth and love into being. Now, Paul, he tells us about strongholds, and he writes in his letter to the church of Corinth in 2 Corinthians 10. And I, I'm, I'm reading out of the New Living Translation, which is a slightly more conversational translation to the Bible. And, and I, I love the way that it puts this verse. It says, we are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. See, Paul, is, is, he's like, hey, I'm going to talk about the war that we're in, but this isn't like a military battle. Paul's talking about a different kind of battle. 
And he says in verse 4, we use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons. So Paul here, again, Paul is saying this isn't about, this isn't a battle about, about uh, fighting war with somebody. It's not a sword and knife battle. It's, it's not a, a stick and dagger battle. It's not any of that. This is a deeper, deeper battle, one that means more than anything else. And he says in verse 4, we use God's mighty weapons, which is truth, God's truth, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. So how many of you out there have, have, have let your human reasoning create bad strongholds in your life? How many of you out there would give anything to start to destroy false arguments that you believe about yourself? How many of you would give anything to let these, these fortified strongholds just be knocked down and to let your, the, the things that, that you've learned to teach yourself about yourself just be proclaimed as, you know what, those are false arguments and I'm just going to let go of that. I'm going to remove that from my life. And see, this is so important that we do this. It's so incredibly important that we do this because of this reason right here. The, the most effective place for Satan to win in your life is on the battlefield of your mind. Satan knows that if he wins in your mind, he's got your whole life. He knows that if he has your thinking, he's got your whole life. He knows that if, you can, if he can control or influence or impact the way that you see yourself, he's got your whole life. It's the easiest way for, for him to hold you down. Now, what do I mean by Satan? You know, listen, don't be afraid of this word. You know, we, we talk about God, we talk about Satan. You know what, I just, if, I want you to know that God is the one that's for you and God is the one that loves you. And that Satan is the one that just, he wants to destroy you. He doesn't want you to believe in yourself. He doesn't want you to think that, that you could see yourself in a positive way. He wants to steal from you. He, he wants to come and kind of destroy the way you think about yourself. Because he just doesn't, he's not for you. But God, God sent his son for you. And in fact, because of God, there's actually a way that we can claim victory over our thoughts. We can claim victory over our strong holds. We can claim victory over the things that we think, the bad things that we think about ourselves. So how do we claim victory? How do we claim back victory? That's a great question to answer. And Paul goes on to answer it in this next verse. He says in, in verse five, this is how, this is what we do with God. And this is what God gives us. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. You know, that word there, capture, that is such an important word. That's a word that means so much because you know what that means that I do? As soon as a negative thought enters my mind, I capture that thought. As soon as something comes into my thinking that doesn't align with who I know myself to be, I capture that thought. As soon as someone else plants a seed of doubt in me, I capture that thought. As soon as I begin to think negative thoughts about my family or my spouse or about my coworkers or whatever it is, I capture that thought. And we capture those thoughts, those rebellious thoughts, and we teach them to obey Christ. What that means is we take our thinking and as soon as it enters our mind, as soon as it comes into consciousness for us, we capture it and we take it to the throne. We take it to Jesus. And guess what happens when we take it to Jesus? Jesus looks at it and he says, trash it. Get rid of it. Don't carry that. Don't believe that about yourself. Don't, no, no, no. You don't live in guilt. You don't live in condemnation. No, no, no. You trash it. That's not for you. That's something that you can capture, you bring it to me, and I'm telling you, drop it and just let go of it. And so with that, I, I wanna ask you guys two questions as we finish off here. The first question that I wanna ask you is this. What negative thoughts are dominating your thinking? What negative thoughts are dominating your thinking? I just want you to pause for a second. Slow down. Think about this. What are the negative thoughts that dominate 
you're thinking. See, it's, it's there in all of us. We all have these things. We wake up in the morning with them. We go to bed at night with them. We carry them throughout the day. What are the negative thoughts that dominate your thinking? It's important that you define those. It's important that you know what they are. This is what I want you to do this week. I want you to think about what are the negative thoughts that are dominating my thinking? Because see, next week... What we're going to do next week is we're going to continue to hammer this truth. We're going to continue to talk about this message. And what I'm going to give you next week is I'm going to give you something, a, a discipline that you can do that can set your entire year on a brand new trajectory. It puts you in the driver's seat over your thinking. It puts you in control over what you absorb or what you believe about yourself. It, 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 it equips you to change your brain, to change the way that you think. But it begins here. What negative thoughts are dominating your thinking? Or another way to ask this question is, what are the strongholds that you struggle with? And so now, question number two is this. And this is the last question, and then I'm, I'm done. What spiritual truth can demolish those strongholds? So the strongholds that you carry, the negative thoughts that you're thinking, what spiritual truth can demolish those strongholds? Now, this is not a question that I expect you to have an answer for. But next week, I'm going to give you an answer for this. Next week, I'm going to give you all an answer for this. And I'm going to teach you next week how to answer this question for yourself. I'm going to teach you how to write that answer down and how to speak it over yourself every single day. But between this week and next week, if you happen to be uh, tuned in and watching this, I just, I want to give you an interim answer. What spiritual truth can demolish the strongholds that you carry? It's it's simple. I'm going to give you a super simple, easy one. And it's this, that Jesus loves you. Jesus is for you. No matter what, whether you believe it or whether you know it, it doesn't change it. Jesus is is for you. If there's one thing that I would ask for you to hold on to, even if it's just barely, even if you don't understand Jesus and don't understand his love, I just want you to hold on, barely hold on to it if you can, that Jesus loves you. And let that be an open doorway of hope that next week we're going to fling that door wide open and we're going to pour into something that's going to completely change your year. So I'm going to pray And after I pray, the band is going to sing a song.